Hi, everyone. My name is Ryan Smiley, and I'm here to talk to you about dollar cost averaging, a strategy for all market conditions. So here's our corporate disclaimer, basically saying that everything I talk about today is represents my viewpoints and not necessarily the viewpoints of our parent company, IA Private Wealth. Here is a snapshot of our team. Um, so once again, my name is Ryan Smiley. For those of you who don't know me, I am an associate portfolio manager and senior advisor on the team here at Love Financial. So without further ado, let's get going. Dollar cost averaging. So dollar cost averaging is a strategy that uh, many of you are already um, subscribing to, maybe without even knowing you are. So for anybody that isn't familiar with the term dollar cost averaging, it's a strategy that requires you to buy a set amount of the same investment whether that be stock, mutual fund, bond, uh, in regular intervals, regardless of market conditions. Anybody that makes regular monthly contributions to their RSP account, TFSA account, is essentially using the strategy. You might all <clears throat> also be using the strategy if you've got dividend income or interest income um, in your account and that uh, dividend or interest income is being reinvested on a regular basis, uh, buying more shares um, with that income. Using this strategy uh, makes even more sense during times of market volatility uh, and market pullback. Um, if you can apply the discipline of purchasing the same investments every period, whether that monthly, biweekly, or even quarterly, as the price of these investments drops, then you'll be lowering the average cost of the investment that you're purchasing. So this, shot, this slide shows uh, that someone who implements dollar cost averaging uh, strategy will end up taking advantage of declines throughout the year by purchasing more investment units um, when there are those months that uh, there are negative negative returns. Uh, so moving on here, um, so the S&P 500 index is um, measures the top 500 companies in America, and uh, and this slide just shows the the returns um, or the times in in the past 42 years when there's been um, negative returns of or returns of, of negative 20% or more or pullbacks uh, of that percentage. So um, we'll, we'll reference the, the most significant uh, pullback or um, as we like to look at it as a sale price is uh, 2007 to 2008 and even dipping into 2009 when, uh, when the markets were down or the S&P 500 was down as much as 51.93%. Uh, so uh, someone who implemented the dollar cost averaging strategy during that time period would have been adding to their account on a monthly basis um, or regular basis and getting more shares at a discounted price. So essentially lowering the cost of their, their average, average purchase price. Um, so when the market does bounce back, that person would be um, would have significant benefit from sticking to a disciplined strategy through the time of of market pullback. Uh, so how does this work with uh, with your account? So the chances are um, you're not a hundred percent stock investor like the S and P five hundred index is. Uh, you've probably got um, a more of a balanced approach to lower volatility. Um, now we've got three, um, we need to pay attention actually to the, the top slide here or the top portion of this slide um, sh with the graph. There's three lines there. So um, well, the one line, the blue line is, is the line showing the or indicating the returns or the account value of a cash investor for the last 20 years. And the top two lines represent uh, balanced growth investors and growth investors. So in this example, um, a, there's three people. They each have $100,000 to invest um, in January of 2002. And each one of them is able to save $500 per month into an investment account. Um, now, the cash investor slash saver is the blue line. And if they put their $100,000 into a GIC cash savings fund in 2002 and added $500 every month to that, that account, um, they'd be left with $303,000 at the end of October, 2022. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. They've, they've built up some savings. Um, but if you compare that to, um, for example, the balanced growth investor 
who's got a uh, 60% allocation to um, to the stock market and 40% to fixed income bonds, um, <clears throat> they would have grown their account to uh, approximately $632,000 over that same period. Now, there is a slight period or, or time frame in 2008, 2009, where the cash, cash savings investor saver uh, would have been ahead of the balanced growth or the growth investor. Um, but in saying that, um, the balanced growth and growth investor actually benefited long term from that pullback. So even though their account went down in the short term, because they're making those $500 deposits every single month, they're actually buying in at a lower point. So they're actually benefiting long term and their account is worth more today because of that pullback in uh, in 2008, 2009, than it would have been if they had just a flat flat level of return. Um, so now that we've established that dollar cost averaging is a strategy that's time tested and it does work, um, it will work for any type of account. So regardless if you're in, you're saving in an RSP, TFSA, or non-registered account, uh, this strategy works for for all all three of the above. Um, we'd recommend in general that you'd be using an RRSP account if your income is expected to be lower in retirement than it is now. We'd recommend a TFSA account in general if you're um, either maxed out your RRSP account or if you make under $50,000 in taxable income. And lastly, a non-registered account if you've maxed out your RRSP and TFSA accounts. I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any one of the team members here at Left Financial and we'll be happy to help. Thank you.